folks, Ariel over here with a little cooking video, which I haven't had time to do in quite a while, because all summer long we tend to be really crazy busy, and I barely have time to make anything, and it does take longer when you record it. But, that said, this is a quick one. What I am doing today... I don't know if you know what it's called, I'd have to come up with a name. Um, I'm making my skillet really hot. If you actually had something like a real wok or whatever, that would be great for this. I'm just using a big cast iron skillet because that's what I have. Um, and I'm putting in plenty of coconut oil, or you could use butter, whatever uh, your favorite oil is. I do a lot of uh, cooking with coconut oil. I'm getting that melted and the skillet hot. You want to have everything prepped for this because when you actually go to cook it, everything goes really fast and you're going to want to eat it right away. What I've got in here is a bunch of veggies that are already either cut up or shredded, and that is thanks to, um, you certainly could do your own, but at the moment, I have a friend who works for a restaurant. They're closing for the off-season, and they were cleaning out stuff in the fridge, and most people know if they don't want to throw food away, I can usually find a way to use it for something. So I got a bunch of their prepped veggies uh, given to me. So that's what I'm using. I've got shredded carrots, um... Uh, shredded zucchini, bean sprouts, broccoli, um, and that's what I'm gonna do for the veggie portion of this. As soon as the skillet is nice and hot and coated with oil, we're gonna fry them up, add a few seasonings, and then here I've got some, um, this is elk steak that I sliced last night. Clay and I had this for dinner last night, but I, I just made each uh, plateful fresh we ate that, and I'm having leftovers for lunch today, so that's what you're seeing. Um, anyway, if you ever want to slice steak super thin, um, like a lot of these pieces, I don't know if you can see that, how thin that is, it makes it good for something like this kind of stir-fry dish because it, it cooks very quickly. But the easiest way to do that is to have it frozen or... or mostly frozen. If it's just been out of the freezer just long enough you can get a knife through it, you can cut meat super thin, and if it's completely thawed, it, that's very difficult to do. So that's a little tip I, that was frozen pretty almost solid um, when I sliced that up yesterday evening. Anyway, my skillet's hot, so I've got all of my veggies, and I'm just going to basically dump all of this stuff in here. It looks like a lot, but it's going to shrink pretty rapidly. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. This is to taste. I use Redmond Real Salt for the vast majority of things. Um, it comes from a, a mine not too far from me in Utah, and it looks dirty because of all the actual minerals in there that are very important for your health. This is some soy sauce, a little fermented soy, and I'm just doing a, a little sprinkle of a couple drops there. I want this to actually kind of fry, not steam. Um, if you like things a little spicy, I'm a wimp about spice, but I like the flavor of this. I'm adding just a few red pepper flakes. You could go much heavier on that if you actually like things hot and spicy. Um, let me get these sauteing. This is all I'm going to taste. Just a little bit. I don't want these cooked to death. Um, they're much more tasty and appetizing, and uh, as well as being more nutritious. And then this, I'm dumping in just a little bit of brown sugar. I don't know what that is. Maybe a tablespoon and a half or something. Because um, that, with the soy sauce and salt and pepper, is going to give you not really a sweet and sour sauce, but a little bit of like a... not really a marinade what's flavoring this dish. Give this a stir. Keep that heat turned up as high as I can. Because I don't want to hear, hear how that sizzling is going down. I don't want that. I want this to keep frying, not start steaming. And again, a wok would be a much better skillet to do this. But I'm going to do the veggies here. And in just another second, I'm going to pull them out and then fry up the meat. So this is a really quick dish you could make with any combo of veggies. This happened to be the stuff I had around now. You could add, you know, peppers, summer squash, onions, cabbage, eggplant, just about anything. I do similar things with just whatever, um, 
whatever veggies I have on hand or in season at the moment. But this is something that can be made very quick for a meal and is very tasty and nutritious. You will notice there's starting to be some liquid in the bottom of the pan. That is just from the moisture uh, cooking out of the veggies. And this is almost done. My broccoli is bright green. Everything else is getting just tender, which is all I want. I think it needs just a tiny bit more salt. We are going to call the veggies done. Scoop them out of here. I'm leaving the heat on because I want that skillet to be good and hot for the meat that I'm just about to fry up. And then I've got that leftover vegetable juice um, in my pan, which of course being cast iron is hot. I'm just going to pour that in that bowl to, to save it. Either Burley's going to drink it or I'll put it in something else. Um, get the skillet back hot again. Heat's still on. Going to add just a little bit more coconut oil to melt again. And this is not a real easy meal to make for a giant crowd of people because it's if you're doing it all at once it's hard to to get each portion fried up because that's about the most you can do in a skillet without having it turn into like stewing like a, a soup now this steak is sliced super thin so i'm just going to and of course you could do this with beef chicken anything else uh, elk is what we happen to have a lot of so that's what i tend to use a lot of Anyway, I'm putting it down in just a single layer here as best I can, right onto the hot griddle. It's especially with game meats, they are best not overcooked. So I'm going to do that. Use my little salt shaker so I don't oversalt it. If they are so thin, give it a tap of salt. By the time I get all that done, I can flip each piece over. And this is pretty much going to be done and ready to eat. Game meat is so lean with almost no fat that if you overcook it, it gets tough very rapidly. So that's enough. We're going to kill the heat. Throw these on top of our plate of food. Fill them all off. And start to finish, there is a wonderful dinner. Hello, over here at Fineth. Thank you so much for watching these videos and spending some of your very valuable time choosing to do that. We hope you found something that was useful, educational, helpful, maybe save someone else some time and trouble, or just something just plain beautiful. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for coming along on our journey as we build a new little homestead with our tiny house and everything to come.